<laughs> what up, cuz? <laughs> I'm here. I'm Doc, also known as Dr. Cooley. Don't really have a name for it. It's kind of like just... I, yeah, like, honestly, I don't have a... Like, it's, it don't fit any specific type of genre. It's just like... It's, it's, it's like music, music. Like, I don't... I don't really know how to explain it. I was producing since I was maybe 16? Yeah, 16 and I started rapping like almost a year or a year or two ago. But I started since I was 16. It's all about the fucking energy, bro. Like, music to me is like all right, you got a you got a kind of a superpower. You can make people feel any type of way you want to, and it's just like all right, whatever energy you put out there, it's like all right, that's what you make people feel like. See me, I make people feel like all right, we're gonna go out, we're gonna party, we're gonna chill, we're gonna do what we gotta do, we're gonna have fun though. Like that's that's like the type of music I actually like do do. Just being out and enjoying life inspires me, bro. Like. I, I, I don't get inspired by being in the studio. Like, I was telling why that shit. I was like, bro, I don't, I don't get inspired by being in the studio, like, every day, all day, none of that shit. Like, I get inspired just by, like, just, just everyday life, honestly. What I like to do outside of doing music. She, uh, fucking with my dogs, uh, Dogs, I mean dogs, like actual animals. Uh, hiking, and they like that. Yeah, this shit don't even make sense. They like this. He don't sound like he. Yeah, hiking. Shit, I do my own taxes. I don't. I'm just lying about that. It just seemed like the right type of thing to say. Uh, shit, like honestly, like if you want to be real, real outside of work. I mean, not outside of work. Well, it is work, but outside of making music, bro. All I like doing is just partying. And that's the fucked up part about it. Like, I ain't gonna say it. I don't wanna say I'm like, I got problems. But I do. But they good problems. You know what I'm saying? Like, some of your demons are angels. Like, honestly, the only thing I'm passionate about is my friends and my family. I mean, like, I try to make sure everybody good. Like, everybody that I know and, like, my family. Honestly, I'm just passionate about making sure everybody, like, win. You know what I'm saying? Like, same thing with you, bro. I wanna make sure. You win it. I'm, I'm gonna put you in any like type of position I can put you in for you to make money. But yeah, yeah. What I'm passionate about is my friends and my family. Making sure everybody good. Make sure everybody living comfortably. Like that's why. I, like I can't wait until I really, really get this money, money. Like it, when I get this money, bro. Everybody I know, everybody that's chill with me, everybody that's cool with me, I believe in, and like that's actually doing anything. And like I'm, bro. I'm make sure we all comfortable. That's what I'm passionate about. I'm passionate about the future. Like I, I just can't wait till I actually like I actually get on. That way I'll be able to like fucking take care of anybody that I need to take care of. Cause everybody take care of me. like everybody take care of me. Like even back in the day, bro, everybody you know, took care of me, like, even when I had no job type shit and I ain't had really no income coming on, like I always had people like I can like depend on to like help me out with the shit and that's why I'm passionate about like actually getting to this money cuz it's about my time to do some shit you know what I'm saying the coronavirus fucked, fucked up everything with me I ain't gonna hold you like even like uh, just like my schedule of like going to the studio and shit like that. It's just like, all right, this shit is in the way. That's why I fuck with Wyatt now because he be fucking with me. You know what I'm saying? But uh, the coronavirus stopped my whole process, and I just started like, I just started getting on, like not even too long ago. Like literally a month before this corona shit happened, I started getting on, and then the shit just like stopped. Studios closed and. Like, uh, people not coming to the crib, like, trying to do videos, and that shit, like, like fucked up my whole artistry. Like, honestly. And the Black, Li the Black Lives Matter shit, like, the George Floyd shit, 
Uh, I mean, it's it's fucked up. I mean, it, it, it's been a lot of situations where it was fucked up when it pertains to like black people and like getting harassed by the police and stupid shit like that. Like, see, most people think it's like black and white. I never thought it. Like, I never thought that. Like, in any situation, type shit. Like, even literally or figuratively. I was like, bro, it's not black or white. It's always a gray area. You know what I'm saying? But with that whole situation, it was just like, all right, if you actually look at the video, I cringe looking at the video. And I don't, I, don't, I literally don't, like, I'm sorry to say this, but I don't give a fuck about, like, none of this, like, police brutality, like, all this big wild shit. Like, I honestly don't care. And it's fucked up to say. Especially like nowadays, but you gotta look at it this way. Like we've been living with, like in D.C. Southeast, we've been living with it our whole lives to the point where it's normal. So it's kind of like weird to differential, like dif differentiate, like you know what I get. Like you know what I'm trying to say. It's like hard to differentiate, like when it's serious and when it's not. Cause we like we like I don't got robbed by the police, bro. I don't got I don't got shot twice by the police. And they weren't even police. They was DC, DC Metropolitan, bro. Like they not, they not real police. They like mall cops. Like I done got shot by the police. I done got robbed by the police. Harassed constantly. So being in that situation where you kind of like grew up with the shit, it's like you can't tell whether to be serious or not. But. The whole George Floyd shit, that shit only fucked me up because it was like, alright, this motherfucker told you, like, he can't breathe. That's literally like a person saying, hey, bro, if you don't let me go, I'm gonna die. And that's the only part that made me, like, cringe about the whole thing. It's just like, alright, he's telling you, man, bro, he can't breathe, bro. Like, ease the fuck up, let my man breathe, put him in a squad car. And it sounds easy as fuck, right? It sounds like it's easy shit to do, and it should be that easy, but it ain't happening that way. And that kind of like shows you, like that, that that's the only thing that kind of made me like actually get serious about the shit. Is like, all right, he begged for his life. Motherfucker begged for his life. And you did that shit, so it's kind of like, like, bro, you deserve whatever like death you getting. Not death, but like whatever's, like whatever you getting, bro, you deserve it. Like, it, it, it just don't make sense to me. It just kind of made me, like, more aware. You know what I'm saying? But even though I just really don't care. Like, police come, fuck it. Well, you with the menace, I'm with the menace too, bro. Fuck it. Let's go. Yeah. <laughs> it is what it is. Shit, that's a good fucking question. And it changed the black community because, uh... It really, it really drew people attention. You know what I'm saying? It make people like do their research on uh, black oppression and shit like that. So community-wise, I think that this shit will make us smarter, move as a, a whole, not even as black people, but as a whole world. Like you see white, like you see white people, you see Hispanic people, you see like. Uh, Arab people, you, you see all colors standing up for like one fucking thing. And I think that's gonna change not even the black community, that's gonna change everybody communities, but it's gonna make uh, bl the black community trust more, and you know what I'm saying, like more than we've been trusted because, like, before this shit, bro, I ain't gonna hold you. Everybody, like, fuck white people. I'm like, you gotta give them a chance. It's like, nah, nah, we good, we already know how it is. But now that they seeing everybody stand together, like they see white people getting shot for their cause. Not shot shot. Oh, it was a motherfucker that got choked out and shot. Yeah, but they, they seeing people like suffering for them. They seeing like every color like actually giving a fuck about it. So it's gonna make us more trusted and more open and like help out the community type shit and uh even more, bro, like it's 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 a bad thing, but it's a good thing at the same time. You know what I'm saying? Just everybody everybody came together over this shit, and I feel like that shit ain't going. It, it's not going to change. Like everybody going to stay together, and everybody going to do what they got to do. You know what I'm saying? To make sure that like our community as a whole like person or whole people 
make sure our community is striving in the right way type shit. You know what I'm saying? But like as an artist, I don't think it's gonna change nothing I say, brother. And because I speak out about my actual life. Like that's the one thing people always say, oh yeah. Uh why you rap about this and why you rap about that and why you do this and why you do that? It's like bro, I actually live that. Like you can see tattoos, bro, over the scars and all that, bro. One right here. I got one in my hand. A couple of, like, I don't actually lived it. Like, I don't just be talking about the shit and just to actually talk about it. You know what I'm saying? So it's not going to really change nothing in my artistry. Because my art is so, it's so outcast to, like, the whole situation about George Floyd. Like, that's George Floyd and this my art. Like, my art don't got nothing to do with that. You know what I'm saying? Like, it is fucked up. Like, I think it'll impact me, but it really won't impact my music. It probably make me more conscious of what I say, but other than that, oh, I ain't gonna, ain't gonna stop nothing. Shit. Uh, I don't know how many tattoos I got, but look, listen. <laughs> I did all my, oh, I did most of my tattoos. So I literally, I was just drunk as fuck. Like a couple days, I was like, oh, <laughs> tattoo gun, let's get it. <laughs> Go ahead, tattoo. But my favorite one is definitely the hmm. That's like the first ad lib I've ever said in a song that got like a, a real good like back viewing in it like that's when I like switched up my whole flow whole artistry everything and the hmm literally was like the best ad lib I ever had and it remind me of Scooby Doo and I fuck with Scooby Doo you know what I'm saying so I just got it tatted it's funny as fuck but it's like true like fuck it like hmm <laughs> You can be rich, but don't be comfortable. Yeah, yeah, and this is, this is the dude from D.C. that, his name is Southie Slim. Uh, he never made it out there, out there, but, like, doing his prime and shit like that, like, he said that shit, and then, like, what I take from him is, like, all right, you can be rich, but don't be comfortable, because if you, if you're too comfortable with where you at, you will never move forward. You know what I'm saying? That's why I actually fuck with it. Like, fuck it. You can be rich, but don't be comfortable. Nothing. Straight up and down. It don't look like anything, bro. <laughs> Simple. My whole process is just like catching a vibe, bro. Honestly. Just like hearing the music, doing what I gotta do, feeling the energies around me type shit, and I just go in for it. Valley Girl. <laughs> nah, Valley Girl recorded with my man Wyatt. And uh, literally, I like he told me, he was like, all right, bro, I got these beats. Show me a couple beats type shit. And I was like, all right, cool. And uh, usually what I do is it's like, because I write all the time and shit like that. So it's just like I can kind of like match and match what type of beats go to like what type of like lyric I got. But like with this one, I was like, bro, this shit fire, cause I got like right, a whole new pro, and it ain't even take me that long. It took me like, shit, how long? Like, what, 20 minutes, 10, 15 minutes? It ain't take me that long, but yeah, yeah. Oh, I was just talking to my homie about this earlier today. It was like, I told him uh, the dude that like actually inspired, like. He ain't inspired me, like, my whole family, like, do music and shit like that. So, I get good bits of, like, information from everybody. But my, uh, Uncle Hot Sauce, sorry, yeah, yeah, my Uncle Hot Sauce, part of, uh, Backyard Band, uh, he told me a whole bunch of shit, and then my pops actually told me some shit that kind of got something to do with it. He said, uh... It don't matter how long it take, the process is never instant. Like, you can, he, he, he literally told me, he's like, alright, it's just like you compare music with the gym. You can't go in there one day, work out, and think you're gonna get buff. 
You know what I'm saying? You gotta just keep working on it. You gotta keep going. The results ain't gonna come as soon as you want them to come, but keep going, keep going, cause you almost did. You know what I'm saying? What struggles have you had to endure as an emerging artist? Uh, shit, a lot. <laughs> uh, just the the resources that I had to like create for myself, which is kind of like. It's kind of easy for me because, like, I'm so, I'm a social person. Like, I'm cool as fuck. Like, well, I try to be. Like, well, I don't try to be, but you get what I'm saying. Uh, just resources. And that's, like, the main thing when it comes to, like, any struggling artist or any artist that, like, just, just starting their shit up. Resources is the biggest thing. Rather, it's, like, resources to, like, uh, a and r resources to... Radios, uh, airplay, distribution, it's, uh, it's a lot that comes with resources, but that's, like, been my most, like, like, well, coming up, like, right now, that's, like, been my most, like, the, my biggest obstacle is just getting resources, but now it's just like, oh, people know me, ah, yes, got it. The outcome of the process. The outcome of the fucking process is what makes me like the most excited. Like, you know, you in a studio all day, bro, and you just like recording, you recording, you recording, you recording, and you like, fuck it, let's go to the next song. Record, record, record. Don't mix none of that shit. Like, wait until we done with it. Like, let, let me get, like, let me get my time in. The process, though, the outcome of the process is like the best fucking thing. Like, hearing it all come together, hearing it all mix. Master, like even with videos, like seeing all of that shit, like just that, that's like it gets me like hype, hype. Like whenever somebody send me a video that I recorded, I'm just like, okay, is it real? And it's just like, oh yeah, all right, cool, yes. It's just the outcome of every process, bro. Honestly, that's what gets me the most excited. Well, second the most excited. Homeless people. I'm not saying it like, all right, cause I used to be homeless. Like, uh, before, like I was, I wasn't, a, like I was adopted. Like my parents like left me when I was three or four. My uncle took care of me for like one year. And then after that, like, uh, I was just like doing whatever I had to do until my adopted parents adopted me like six, six years after all that shit happened. So from, from five all the way up until my parents adopted me, like I was homeless. I was just out in Havana, just doing whatever the fuck I wanted to. It was fun, but it was like just kind of fucked up. Like, but coming from that type of coming from that type of shit, and then like coming out and seeing how people like treat homeless people was like, I, I guess you would say the way people like if people treated homeless people really, really bad. That's what make me like. The saddest, because they don't, they don't really have no choice, bro. Like, they didn't choose to, they ain't choose to be homeless. They ain't choose to have none of the shit that they got right now. It's, they was in that situation. And the fact that people, like, not more open than, like, actually help out. And being, being, like, an ex-homeless person and shit like that. Just like, yeah. Yeah. Yes, sir. I love you. <laughs> You better. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but what was I saying? Uh, yeah, yeah. The way uh, like if people treat homeless people bad, that's like what actually makes me sad. Cause we never like as humans, man, like human beings, we never have a choice to do anything. We'll end up in any bad situation we have. It's like the most thing we can do is just like help each other out, bro. Like that's what we here for. Like, fuck all that, bro. Like, he's starving, cuz just give him some money or give him some, give him some, like, food or something like that. Like, help out any way you can, bro. 40 if you want to. That's, I mean, shit. If I got an extra 40, I'll give it to a homeless dude. Everybody needs something to help him get them through the day. But also, it's just like, hey, we all gotta help each other. Straight up and down. It can't be, like, no other way. That ain't the way we, like, that ain't the way we, like, Make it as like a whole community or like a, as human beings. All right, gotta help each other out. And make me sad when I see people helping each other out. 
happy. Hell yeah. I never make like sad music just because, like I said, it's the energy, like the type of music you make is the energy you put out. I don't never like, I don't want to make people like sad as fuck or like worry about anything or, you know what I'm saying? Just like, I don't, I don't condone like sad music or like, honestly, I'm sorry to say this. I don't condone like music that make people stress out. Like the whole reason between, like behind music, like bro, we got superpowers. We can make people feel how we want them to feel. Why would you make, like want to make somebody like sad or you want to make somebody like feel like they should do more with their life and anything like that. You know what I'm saying? Like, I fuck with, like, music like that. Like, J. Cole and shit like that. I love J. Cole. I just don't condone... I just don't condone the energy. Like, I condone the message, like, letting people, like, know, you know what I'm saying, what the fuck, that, like, what's going on out here. But, like, the energy, it, it, it just don't sit right with me. Especially, like, when my whole, like, family is, like, musicians and shit like that. Like, they literally like they try to make people as happy as possible. They try to make you have a like they want you to have a good experience. They don't want you to be like, oh shit, I fucked up with my life because I don't pay attention to this or I don't do that. So I must be like, like nah, bro, don't don't ever do that. Music is a superpower. Yeah, save people, not make them feel bad. <laughs> Drink. <laughs> I need drink, uh, good energy, I need my homies in there, you know what I'm saying, we just having fun, and a good engineer, the good engineer, that's, oh, that's number one right there, I swear to God, a bad engineer can make, like, not even a bad engineer, like, a mediocre engineer can make your whole experience, like, so much worse than it is, I was telling Wyatt about this shit earlier today, nah, dead ass, good engineer, Good vibes and company and drink. That's it. Morning on the night. Oh, I mean, damn, that's a good question. Or in the middle of the day, shit. It's still a good question. Like, don't nobody knows like what's the best time to record because it's just like whenever you feel like it. Like I record whenever I feel like it. You know what I'm saying? I don't really got a specific type of, like, alright, I don't really care if I record from 3 a.m. to 6 a.m. I, I don't care if I record from, like, 9 in the morning all the way up until 10 or... It just don't matter to me. Like, your mood don't change at all, so... Well, my mood doesn't change at all, so it's like... Whenever I feel like doing it, bro, I just do that shit. This, this is gonna be... This is a fucked up story that I'm about to say. <laughs> But I finally got like a, uh, I got like, this is my first free studio session where they was like, just come in here and record this shit and we got you. Like, don't worry about the cost or none of that. So I was like, all right, cool. So, uh, went into the studio. I was all so much Molly. It was like, fucked up. It was actually like crazy. It was lit though. I was booted up. I was happy. I'm like, eh, eh, I'm in the booth. Finally got time for me to record. I recorded half of the verse, and then I went outside, and we was smoking, like, jacks and shit like that. Uh, and then, mm, I got shot. I was at Archer Gang Studio, uh, with Archer Mook, uh, Slutty T. I was with my man, uh, Young Thugger, and, uh, Booga. Funny how the name matches. We was all off Molly. Chilling, drinking, all of that. I recorded like half of a verse. And then like I don't know why, but like midway through since we took so long to like actually start recording, I was just like weefing. I was like, alright, I gotta go outside and I gotta like smoke real quick. So went outside smoking. We thought a branch broke. We literally thought a branch broke from the sound, but it was an actual like gunshot and my arm like just started hurting like bad and shit. I'm like, whoa, what the fuck is going on? They like, bro, you got hit? I'm like, I don't know. Like it, like you see the small ass, like the small ass, it was literally like a 22. Didn't know, I was like, I don't think I got hit. They like, probably gotta go to the hospital. I'm like, fuck that, bro. I already paid for this studio time, bro. I'm recording something. So, 
went back into the studio. I got a, a brown paper bag. My my homie uh, took off his sock and gave it to me for like, you know what I'm saying, leverage to tie it up. So he took off his sock, put the brown paper bag over my arm, wrapped that thing up, went back in the booth, and I started going off. I swear to God, like, you can ask, like, I, bro, you can ask anybody that know me. I ask Smokey Blossom, ask Young Thugger, you can ask Boo God, you can ask Archie Gang Move, you can ask Slutty T. Like, everybody in D.C. knows that story just because it was, like, it was popping that whole day, like, parties and all that shit. So everybody was around that. And motherfuckers was, like, trying to tell me I was crazy. I'm like, no, I'm not crazy. I'm broke. <laughs> it's a difference. I was broke as shit. I already done paid for the shit, so... I mean, I'm gonna go to the hospital, spend like two days in there anyway, so why not just go ahead and get this shit out of the way? You know what I'm saying? And that was like the third song in the album, honestly. Yeah, third song in the album. I recorded that shit while I got shot. Bullet still in me. Paper bag, dirty sock, all that. And I recorded it in a fucking closet. Uh. You know what I'm saying? Look, it's okay. Like, fuck that shit, bro. Like, we already paid for it. I'm good. Like, I'm getting it all this time, bro. Mm -mm. Nah. Getting all this time. <laughs> fuck that, bro. Don't be scared to, like, be social with people, bro. Like, that's another, that's a, that's another piece of advice I would say. Don't be scared, bro, to, like, be yourself, bro. Don't, scared. Don't be scared to, like, talk to people. Don't be scared to go out your lane. This is just don't be scared. Like I'm, I don't care what I say to anybody. It well, take that back. I'm very careful when it comes to like very sensitive situations. But other than that, I don't care about what I say to anybody because why? Well, why not be me? That's why everybody like my music, right? Fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> My dog. <laughs> Appreciate it.